Hello, we're going to work on solving a linear inequality. Now the process for doing so is exactly the same as solving just a normal equation with one exception. We have to remember that if we ever multiply or divide by a negative number that we should flip our inequality sign. Okay, so other than that it's going to look a lot like solving an equation. Okay, so as I go through trying to solve this thing my first thing I'm trying to do is get these x's together. So I'm going to break this guy out of my parentheses by using distribution. And this will give me a 3x plus 5 greater than or equal to 2x minus 14. All right, not so bad. Now let's go ahead and get these x's together by subtracting a 3x from both sides. So now I have 5 greater than or equal to a negative 1x minus 14, and now our x's are together. Great. Okay, once you have a single x, let's work on making sure it is isolated so that it is the only thing on one side of the equal sign. All right, so to start, I'm going to add 14 to both sides, giving me a 19 greater than or equal to a negative 1x. All right, now we want to make sure that x is completely alone on one side, which means i got to find some way to get rid of this negative 1. No problem. We will divide both sides by negative 1, and then continue. Now remember, if you ever divide or multiply by a negative number, this is the situation where we flip that sign. So negative 19 is less than or equal to x. Again, note that flipping of the sign. So this is our final answer, that x is any number greater than or equal to a negative 19. Now if you want to represent this a different way, you might imagine a number line. So let's put negative 19 on there. And on this number line we would shade in all of our solutions for x. So I'm going to shade in everything that is greater than a negative 19. Now it says or equals to, so I'm also going to include the negative 19. So here's how I could represent the answer on a number line. Now one last way I could represent is using interval notation. So I would describe two points between which all of my x's fall. So from the number line I can see that anywhere between negative 19 all the way to infinity, my answer has to be between these two locations. And infinity is not a number, so don't include it. 19, include that one because it says or equals 2. So here's a third way you could represent your answer. But either way is just fine. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.